He was known throughout the world as a cruel tyrant. It had been so since his childhood. People said that the beloved empress was constantly in danger. They called her a delicate flower without thorns, who hid her true face. The man thought that his wife treated him with great care. He fell asleep in her arms every night. The emperor was afraid that his wife would not survive without him. Before his death, he constantly thought about her bright future. Until the last day, the man thought that his wife loved him. But after her death, he learned that she did not need him at all. Now the beauty was responsible for the affairs of the country. She ascended the throne with a smile, holding her little son in her arms. The baby timidly pressed himself to his mother's chest. The blonde took advantage of the male followers, who were like clouds, living in senseless debauchery. She ordered the handsome man to undress. Countless people wanted to enjoy at least a minute of rest with the empress. And who would have thought that the deceased husband would be reborn as her favorite? The brunette was beautiful. The mistress tied the man. She caressed his body and then untied his hands and straddled him. She made him sleep in her bed. The concubines of her late emperor husband were replaced by concubines who pleased her. She asked him to be obedient. The beauty did not know that her husband had been reborn as her concubine, and the brunette did not take his eyes off her. And he told himself that she owed him, and that he would make her pay for everything. The events take place in the door of Hanjan. Nature was already asleep. The branches were covered with frost. It was the third year of Tian Shu's reign. Emperor Shi Wu Ji fell ill and Empress Shen Tang Chao nursed him. The blonde asked his majesty not to leave. She assured him that she could not live without him. The emperor wiped away a tear that rolled uncontrollably down his beloved's cheek. He assured her that everything was fine. The man claimed that such days would always come, and that Yuan An was still young and needed help in many ways. The emperor assured that Song Tai Wei was ambitious, that he knew how to attack and how to retreat, and advised to use him, but not to trust him. It was necessary to find a way to pacify and control him. The husband said that if she could not suppress him, she would soon be killed. He considered Lin Xian's abilities to be average, but he was loyal and could be entrusted with less important tasks. The emperor insisted that Zhu Xian always looked as if he didn't care, but he believed that he would never do anything that would harm his reputation. And he claimed that when Yuan An grew up, he would be able to work with him. The man assured that the Dragon Guard and Qin Wu division would also be given to her, and they could be called the emperor's loyal dogs. And if something were to interfere with her, it was worth giving it to them. Empress Shen Tang Kao shook her head desperately. She cried and grabbed her husband's hand. Her face was swollen from crying. Her husband consoled her. Lying on his deathbed, he said that he could protect his beloved from all adversity before. But in the future, she had to become more independent. He told Shen Tao Chao that she should live a good life and that she should not follow him. The blonde answered his majesty through sobs that she would submit to his will and take care of their country. The emperor said that they just needed to protect their country a little. He assured that his greatest fear was that she and Yuan An would be bullied. Taking her hand, the dying man claimed that in this life he would no longer be able to be with her. But he promised to find his beloved again in the next. Shen Tao Chao assured him that she would wait for him and asked his majesty to definitely find her. Soon his majesty's hand went limp and letting go of his wife, fell lifelessly onto the bed. The wife began to wail. The servants rushed to her. The girls tried to console her majesty. But the blonde suddenly smiled. She quietly told herself that the game was finally over. And so in the third year of Tian Shu, the emperor died, and Shen Tang Chao was proclaimed the Empress Dowager. The blonde majestically ascended to the throne on a red carpet, while everyone in the hall was on their knees. The girl with the child in her arms sat confidently on the throne. The subjects shouted the traditional welcoming words. That same year, the Empress Dowager forced the young emperor Shi Yuan An to ascend the throne. The following year she changed her royal name to Tianji. A blonde with shining eyes sat with a child, and the child timidly pressed himself against her chest. The events unfold three years later. The side hall of the palace overlooked the pond. A young brunette was basking in the hot water of the bath. It was Jian Shijian, his favorite servant. An unexpected creak woke him up. He opened his eyes. The servant said that the dowager empress had called him. The guy claimed that he should have washed himself properly before visiting her highness. She herself kept a large towel ready. Palace courtier Chang Xin Yun Yu leaned over and asked if his help was needed. The brunette roughly grabbed his hand above the wrist and asked how he dared to touch him. The courtier asked him why he stood up so quickly and assured him to be gentle when he served the dowager empress. The brunette narrowed his eyes angrily and the courtier could not understand why he looked so bloodthirsty. The boy insisted that the dowager empress had called him to serve her for the next five days and he asked her to put in a good word for him when he became one of the best in Her Majesty's harem. The man asked what year it was, and who he was, and who the Dowager Empress was. 
he seemed completely confused. The courtier claimed that it was now the second year of Qi Chao Tian's reign, and the Empress Dowager was ruling. After all, she had been heading the government for three years already. He reported that the brunette himself was Jiaye Shijian, and was the same as himself, and all of them were servants in the harem of the Empress Dowager. The man said that he could go, assuring that he would do everything himself. The courtier left, and reminded him that he should have washed himself thoroughly, and whispered that it was especially worth rinsing with warm water in that place. The guy came out and was indignant. How dared that brunette behave so presumptuously, that he imagined himself to be almost the master, and he himself was selling himself in the courtyard for the pleasure of the dowager empress. The waning moon rose in the night sky. Bare and still wet feet confidently walked along the path. The young brunette approached the large mirror. He carefully examined his reflection, realizing how he had become. He even touched the surface, checking the authenticity of what he saw with his own eyes. He brought his face closer to the mirror and looked into his own eyes with a mad gaze. And he said quietly and with a pause, Shen Tao Kao, you are really too good. The servant approached the Empress Dowager and said that the commander-in-chief was displeased that she had recently sent only for concubine Jiang. He sent his confidants to get an explanation, but they were sent back. And he reported that now many counter-movements have begun to appear. The widow replied that if no one looked after Mr. Sun, one day he would become her big mistake. The servant asked the empress if she wished to see consort Ezian today. She nodded her head in the affirmative. The servant turned to the woman and said that she had a special relationship with her concubine. Our heroine replied that they were so similar. The empress asked if he knew Qin Ziqi. She assured that when she first saw Yizian, she was very surprised, and it seemed to her that these few years were just a dream that she had stolen. The emperor was an unpredictable man, and the woman believed that he could simply have faked his own death to fool his ministers or test her. The servant replied that the last emperor had died, and he emphasized that the dead could not return to life. The widow, lost in thought, assured that she had seen him being sealed and the coffin lowered. He would never return. She regretted that the only similarity between them was their beautiful face. Zhang was very timid and modest, which was very different from Shi Wuzi. By the way, it was very boring to tease him. The servant reported that consort Ezian had arrived. The empress thought at the sight of the young man that something had changed in him and called him by name. The concubine answered affirmatively. The woman ordered him to come closer and the young man approached. Shen Tang Chao laid him down from head to toe. She turned to him and asked if he knew how to please people. Ezian replied that he could, and he began to kiss her and caress her body. He asked if she was doing everything right. As soon as the man approached Shen Tang Kao, she suddenly froze. Her pale face turned bright red. She felt as if the shadows of the past were haunting her. The empress slowly and resolutely began to push the concubine away from her. A look of bewilderment flashed in his eyes hidden behind his hair. Then she stood up abruptly and asked how he dared to behave like that. The sudden scream made the white cat jump up and begin to defend its owner. With an angry hiss, the animal soared into the air and pounced on the man. The next moment, her sharp teeth sank into his hand, and he felt a sharp pain. With a slight cry, Zhang clasped his hands together and began to apologize. Kneeling, he realized that he had crossed the line. The blood was still trickling slowly and viscously from his hand. The empress looked at the boy with disdain and ordered him to leave the chambers. Then she sat down and began to stroke the white animal, relaxing. Shen Tang Kao felt uneasy about the situation. She felt like she had overreacted. With a satisfied grin, the concubine stood up and walked away. After a while, the girl slept peacefully, gently wrapped in a blanket. Occasionally, her breathing was interrupted by soft snores, adding peace to the silence of the night. The dowager empress dreamed of her former lover. Gently embracing her from behind, he whispered in her ear that in this life and in the next, she would belong to him alone. The man repeated over and over again that every part of the girl's body belonged only to him. He assured that no one dared to touch a hair of hers. The emperor wanted to tell her what would happen to her if he found out that she had behaved badly. However, his beloved did not let him continue. She quickly turned to face him and hugged him tightly. Shen Tang Chao confidently declared that she belonged only to his majesty. She touched his hand to her face and then moved it over her body, as if demonstrating the boundaries of the man's domain and emphasizing its scale. Shi Wu Ji's warm palm still rested on her chest. The empress continued to assure him that she would always be submissive, never going back on her words. Morning came and Shen Tang Kao woke up. The sun rays were shining through the window, filling the room with soft light and creating a warm atmosphere. The empress rose slowly from her bed and walked smoothly toward the light. She noted with annoyance that Shi Wu Ji had appeared to her in her dream again. 
The girl thoughtfully touched the window glass with her hand. His late majesty had always sought to control her. She silently noted that he was a real owner. If the deceased husband returns and finds out about everything, the empress will not escape his wrath. Her sinful body will be tortured or even deprived of life. The man will definitely not be nice and kind. Zhang Shijiang returned to Changshin Palace. As soon as he stepped through the door, he was immediately greeted by whispers. Not even a day had passed before rumors of what had happened had already spread throughout the entire estate. People were talking about how concubine Jiang had angered the Empress Dowager and had been banished by her. Some were discussing his possible punishment, thinking that it would not be easy for the offender. After all, all good things had to come to an end. Suddenly, courtier Yun Yu ran up to the indifferent consort Jiang. He asked if it was true that the man had been thrown out, and he added that if he starts begging him, he will share with him some exclusive techniques. Perhaps one day with their help, he will be able to demonstrate his masculinity. The guy was silent. His gaze was directed into the void. It seemed that he did not notice his surroundings. His eyes looked through space, as if immersed in deep thought. Suddenly, Qin Zichi's servant came to Zhang Shijiang and told him that the Empress Dowager wanted to see him. Yun Yu just stood there, confused, not understanding what was going on. Courtiers said that the Empress Dowager sent for Consort Jiang for several days in a row, but the Empress's interest in him did not wane. And after Her Majesty reported that Chang Xin needed melodies played on the Guqin, Courtier Jiang did not stop playing the instrument. The guy said that the brunette did not stop playing music, even when the Dowager Empress was not in the courtyard. The concubine in a turquoise kimono sat, and merging with the musical instrument, generated divine melodies. The blonde admired her favorite. She thoughtfully said that the rumors about his talented playing of the Guqin were true. The Empress could not understand why today the song was full of mistakes, and the calm melody suddenly became energetic and cheerful. The mistress claimed that the guy was so unlike himself that it began to seem to her as if those laudatory rumors were not about him at all. Zhang bowed to the floor and assured Her Majesty that he was afraid of angering her again. That fear did not leave him day and night. He offered his deepest apologies for the fact that she was forced to listen to that cacophony. The blonde came up and touched the concubine's face. She asked if anyone had told him how much he resembled the late emperor. The boy denied this fact and added that he would not dare compare himself with the late ruler. The empress took the boy by the chin and looked at him for a long time. Then, having let him go, she admitted that she was right, and she emphasized that his majesty had died many years ago. She claimed that there was hardly anyone in the entire courtyard who even remotely resembled her late husband. The woman insisted that the concubine did not look like her husband at all. She remembered that the emperor had once said that playing the guqin for the sake of entertaining others was just a waste of time. The blonde stated that if he were an emperor, he would never stoop to such a level. The guy, holding back his emotions, clenched his fingers, and the empress ordered him to continue playing. She claimed that the guqin melody best conveys the feelings of the player of this instrument. The brunette lowered his head and was somewhat hesitant. The mistress demanded that he collect his thoughts. She reminded him that he still had to serve her in bed that night. Turning over her shoulder, the blonde imperiously ordered the guy not to do anything that could anger her this time. The brunette bowed his head obediently, and the mistress walked away, moving so gracefully that it seemed she was floating in the air. And the concubine, looking at her from under his forehead, noticed that his empress was certainly making progress. The events take us to the Changxing Palace. The empress ordered to check whether he had been acting suspiciously lately. She wanted to know what he had been doing, who he had been meeting with. The man reported that Commander-in-Chief Song had arrived. He asked whether he should stay here too. After thinking for a while, the Empress told him to go, and she assured him that she could handle it perfectly well herself. The men met as they left the chambers, but neither showed any sign of stopping to greet. Song stopped at the entrance to the Empress's chambers. She stood with her back to him, not turning around at the sound of footsteps. The man dared to come closer and hug the blonde, pressing his cheek to her head. But the mistress pushed his hands away, ready to continue caresses. She called him by name in a stern tone. The blonde scolded Commander-in-Chief Sun for not being able to restrain himself any longer. The Commander-in-Chief reminded Her Majesty that she had promised to abstain for three years, but they had already passed, that he could not allow the consort to get her first. The man wanted to touch the Empress, but she looked at him with a very angry look, and he said that he understood everything. But he said with resentment in his voice that having let Zhang into her bed, the widow would not allow the Commander-in-Chief to even touch her. Our heroine, with a smirk on her face, replied that a man who commands an entire imperial army would really be jealous of her own toy. The commander-in-chief agreed and said that although the consort resembled the late emperor, 
he would never become him. He asked Her Majesty to tell him how much longer he had to wait. After all, many years had passed and he did not want to look at her any longer without being able to even touch her. The army commander could not wait any longer. This made the empress very angry. She said in a displeased voice that his obsession was doing harm, not good. And if a man wants to become her lover, he must first make sure that he does not cross the line. The commander-in-chief became sad and said that this was not what Her Majesty had said when she asked him to serve her. In response, he heard that it was painful. After all, the past was nothing compared to the present. That then the manager, Commander Xiang, and other ministers perceived her differently, not at all like now. The army commander said that he had underestimated the empress, and he himself thought that back then she was a defenseless kitten. But now, the widow interrupted his thoughts. She said that from now on, he would not be allowed to set foot in Changshan Palace without her approval. This was the last reminder. They had to keep their distance. The man thought that when the little kitten bared its claws, it turned him on. But he said out loud that he believed that Her Majesty would keep her promise in the future, that she could always count on him outside the palace at any time. The servant and Jiang met in front of the widow's door. The servant turned to the young man and said that as long as General Song was inside, he should not confront him. It would not end well. Our heroine called her favorite by name and ordered him to undress. She asked if he was familiar with the process or if Qin Zi Qi would teach him tomorrow. The consort replied that there was no need to disturb the steward. When they lay down, the widow tied his hands and said that it was for her safety. The empress asked if he minded it and apologized for having to do it. She suggested that Zhang could be patient for her sake. Zhang replied that he was ready to endure as long as the empress was happy. Our heroine wanted to kiss him, but a stream of thoughts began in her head. Her majesty thought that the concubine might be Shi Wuji, but the positions have now been reversed. The unpredictable, cruel ruler has become her lover. The widow answered the consort that she had nothing to fear, and she very much hoped that the man would always look at her with such a loving gaze. Zhang said without hesitation that if the ruler wanted it, then so be it. But our heroine became sad and turned away from her favorite, saying that she needed to sleep. Zhang was very upset by this and asked the empress if she wanted to have fun with him. With a very thoughtful look, the young man looked at the girl lying next to him and thought that she was very fragile. That one blow would be enough to break her. He looked at his bound hands and whispered that this silk ribbon could not stop him, that his empress was still so naive, but there was still time. Her majesty pretended to fall asleep, but she heard everything. There was only one thought in her head. So he, they fell asleep, and in the morning she was awakened by a knock on the door. A servant came with a report. The empress quietly got up and went out. The subordinate reported to her that the consort behaved very secretively, rarely left his chambers and did not contact anyone. Nothing suspicious was noticed about him. Our heroine was very surprised and said that perhaps he was hiding very well. A servant interrupted her and said that advisor Joe had arrived. The empress heard footsteps behind her and turned around. A very handsome young man stood before her. The man approached her majesty and said that the results of this year's civil service exam were ready and asked her to look at them. The young emperor was outraged. He insisted that his mother had never allowed consorts into her chambers before and he was surprised that she had sent for someone yesterday. The boy walked quickly and confidently, and the servants ran after him. The little ruler assured that he was going to see for himself what was so special about that man. When he caught up with the consort, the young emperor asked if the person standing in front of him was Jiang, asking if his mother had sent for him the night before. Bowing his head, the brunette confirmed the words of his majesty. And looking at his son, he was surprised at how he had grown in three years and he noted that the boy was becoming more and more like him. And the little ruler, looking back at the servants, asked who said that this consort looked like his father. The blonde, watching from afar, thought that if Shi Wuji were still alive, sooner or later she would have seen it. The brunette greeted Her Majesty. The Empress asked where they had left off last time. The man insisted that they were discussing military power and the need for motivation for young officers to join, but at the same time, weakening the military power of Commander Song. The empress reported that she was entrusting him with these concerns. The brunette asked if she had forgotten her husband, but she answered that they were a couple after all. The blonde was surprised how she could just forget everything, as if nothing had happened. The woman bitterly assured that the consort was very similar to her deceased husband. The little boy hugged the concubine, and he himself sadly wondered if his father's embrace would feel the same as this one. The young lord pulled away and complained that he was uncomfortable hugging him, that he was not as gentle as Uncle Joe and not as handsome as Commander-in-Chief Song, and not as young-looking as Yun Yu. The consort could barely contain his anger that he was compared to his former subordinates, 
and that his son gave him a low rating on all counts. And the little boy thought that his mother's preferences were not so important, as long as she was happy. The young emperor pulled the brunette's clothes hard, calling him to come with him. Zhang thought angrily that he was born to irritate him. The empress was discussing matters of state importance at the time, when her son dragged the consort to her by his clothes. There was delight in the child's eyes. The two men's gazes met. The light blue and green male gazes coldly pierced each other. The son asked the blonde if she liked this concubine, and he assured her that if she did, then as an emperor he could give the man a position at court. The boy thought for a moment, and then with the most serious expression, he offered consort Zhang the position of a reserve officer. The brunette became even more angry when he thought that not a single sensible thought would come out of his son's mouth, that he hadn't changed a bit, and he still tried to do everything to harm, and he clasped his hands together at the foot of his kimono. The empress asked her son what he had said. Then she asked consort Zheng what he thought about it. The consort, bowing his head, said that he would never dare to refuse anything offered by the empress. She stared at him, not understanding how little Yuanan could come up with the idea of offering this title to Zhang. There was a satisfied smile on the face of the little ruler. He said that his majesty's orders were akin to the wishes of heaven. Then, turning to the mother, he said that whatever she gave to this man, it would be a gift from God for him. The mother agreed with her son, but said there was no need to rush into it just yet. She said Zhang had done nothing to reward him yet. He had to prove his worth. Lost in thought, the dowager empress began to ponder how exactly the consort could achieve promotion, since his duties included pleasing the young woman and spending nights with her. The low-bowed servant was thinking the same thing. If his empress wanted this, he would not disappoint her. Without raising his head, he said that he would make every effort to please his and her majesty, and he wanted to be recognized by them. The empress thoughtfully said that she would look forward to everything that the servant promised to do. Hearing his mother's answer, the little prince clapped his hands joyfully. Yuanan cried out in delight that it was wonderful. He said that he would personally reward the consort when the time came. The concubine was silent, bowing his head and thinking about something, not responding to Yuanan's words. At this time, Advisor Zhou came up to him and stood next to him. The little lord, seeing him, asked his mother why she and Uncle Zhou were not together. After all, he liked her, and he heard that they were engaged. The mother gently stroked her son's head and asked who had told him this. The little boy replied that it was Aunt Fang who had told him about it. The young woman closed her eyes and quietly said that it was a long time ago, and the promise was only given in words. At that time, they were still children. They were of the same noble class. They had much in common. The children sincerely loved each other. But in the girl's life, changes occurred, because of which they had to part. Then Yuanan asked his mother if she meant his father, and if he had forced her. The woman replied that it was not about that. The boy cried out joyfully that he knew his father was sincere and fair. Looking into the wide open eyes of the child, the mother thought that it would be better if her son did not find out about all the dirty things that his father did during his life. The empress continued to stroke the child's head. She thought it would be better if he believed that his father was a good man. The woman asked the prince if he liked Advisor Joe. The boy said that of course Uncle Joe loved and appreciated him very much. Then the little emperor asked his mother if there was even the slightest chance that they could be together again. The blonde replied that Advisor Joe was the head of all ministers, that he had an impeccable reputation, and the empress did not want to ruin his career. She added that she had fallen out of love with him long ago, and now the woman saw no reason to renew her relationship with him. After all, when they had to part, the woman realized that there could be nothing between them. At that distant time, the girl forever ended everything that connected them. All memories of this were buried in the past. Somewhere deep in her heart, only the memory of those events remained. The empress thought that she had completely forgotten about it. Suddenly the boy asked if his mother could stay away from the song commander. The child admitted that he felt uneasy just from looking at him. The little emperor said that he did not like song at all. Placing her hand on her son's head, the dowager empress said that she would take care of it. The boy replied that if his mother was lonely, she could call consort Jiang more often. He also liked Yun Yu, although he was a bit strange. The son said that at least his mother would not be bored with him. The empress thought that he really was living with consort Jiang, and she had not seen him for a long time. The young woman decided to send for him that night. As he passed behind Chun Yi's garden, he heard happy voices. Apparently two people were talking. The voices were male and female. The guy became interested in what was happening behind the wall, and he decided to look out and see who was in the garden. John Sijian was amazed to see a man in transparent clothing there. He immediately guessed that the stranger was a new Korsun. A girl stood next to him and enthusiastically praised the concubine's new look. 
Her hand reached out to touch the young man's graceful body. However, he pulled her hand away, not wanting to feel the girl's touch on himself. And indeed, surely only the Empress could touch it. His only plan was to appear before the Empress that night in this robe and conquer her. Corson hoped to surprise Her Majesty in this way. And if she asked for satisfaction, he would immediately get down to business. However, the answer did not match the guy's mood. The partner thought that the image was too revealing and was completely tasteless and depraved. The thought that had taken root in Zhang Xijian's mind was that the young man had no taste at all. However, Shen Tanchao thought differently. He was certain that consorts could not be shy. He believed that the young and beautiful empress would certainly appreciate, and moreover, promote her subordinate for his ability to think ahead. After all, she was truly a beautiful, sultry lady with whom everyone wanted to spend the night. And what's most important, anyone who wanted to could afford it. What was surprising was that there were plenty of people willing to try their luck with the Empress. The newcomer asked for advice on how to behave properly in order to remain among Her Majesty's favorites. This surprised Shen Tan Chao. He did not expect that he would be asked for advice at all. He pointed to one single enemy, Commander-in-Chief Sun. This man hated the Imperial Corsons, but did not touch them due to his status. But the guy also warned that it was not worth tempting fate and catching Sun's eye. Over delicious traditional tea, they discussed the details of their joint venture. After all, from now on, they were sailing in the same boat. And they even agreed to help each other. It was a mutually beneficial decision, because their enemy was common, and their goal was also the same. Afterwards, he asked Momochi's servant to bring his little helpers, whom he had snatched up cheaper than at the market, to show them to his new friend. And even on the occasion of a new friendship, he offered a couple to Jian. He did not suspect how this would turn out for him. It was as if the brunette had been waiting for just that. He easily picked up the chest and carried it. Naturally, this angered Shen, because he had suggested taking a few and not taking his entire supply. He immediately ran to demand his priceless babies back, and he regretted that the assistant brought a whole chest. In the evening after sunset, the Empress Dowager arrived at Chun Yi Garden. Shen Tanchao was incredibly happy about this. He had spent the entire day preparing for this evening with Her Majesty. The guy didn't care that his new friend, Jiang Shijian, had taken all the necessary things for himself. And now all hope was left for a relaxed, transparent, eye-catching outfit. Corson went to the main hall to the mistress. He was incredibly happy to see her again, so beautiful and refined. The young man hugged his lady and told her that he had not seen her for fifteen years. He was tormented by the thought that after such a long time, the Empress's subordinate might have ceased to be interesting to her. It was even possible that the guy's face had aged. But the woman wiped away his tears and assured Corsun that since she had come to meet him, everything remained as before. Against the backdrop of delicate pink sakura flowers, the guy's tear-stained eyes could be compared to these beautiful petals. He suggested that the lady of his heart take a rest. However, she hastened to calm her old acquaintance. She wanted to talk more and find out what had happened to him during so many years of separation. The Empress touched the golden chains on Corson's body with her gentle fingers, causing a groan to escape his mouth. Looking up at Her Highness, kneeling, he was glad of any opportunity to serve and bring joy to Milady. Corson was ready to take off his clothes. However, the lady stopped him, reproaching him for his haste. Bowing her head and looking languidly at the guy, she decided to ask about his roommate, Zhang Shijian. This caused confusion on the consort's face. Even more, Yun was infuriated by this treatment of him. After all, it turned out that the Empress had called him only to find out more information about the rival. Corson's anger made the Empress laugh. Her eyes were adorned with glare and wrinkles that gathered at her temples. The young man took this as encouragement. He began to describe in detail all the negative aspects of his neighbor, including the fact that he stole his collection of valuable things. The lady was interested in this fact, but the guy dodged the question of what was in the chest. Finally, he got bored with the conversations, and leaning on Her Majesty's gentle palm, he asked only to pay more attention to Yun Yu. He assured her that he could not ask for more. This touched the mistress. She promised to return Corson's treasures. After all, he was so obedient and faithful to her. Squinting her cunning eyes, the Empress began to think of a plan of what she should do to consort Jiang in revenge for his illegal actions. She walked towards the exit, leaving the guy nothing to do but look at her perfectly straight back and smooth, long, luxurious hair with a silver sheen. As the night approached, Shen Tan Chao vented his emotions in an angry cry of hatred towards Jiang Shijian. At dawn, amid the singing of birds and the buzzing of bees, Yun Yu's residence was already in full swing. Consort Jiang was asked to go to his chambers before an important conversation. He knew what was going to be discussed, and naturally, his neighbor and his treasures were involved. Upon arrival, the Empress did not hesitate. 
but immediately got to the point. She was interested in why the brunette took the children from Consort Yun. Zhang Shijian immediately responded in his defense by saying that this might shock his mistress. The girl was surprised and sat on Corson's lap to look him straight in the eyes. She asked what was in those things, because they were intended for her pleasure. Approaching his ear, whispering to his hair, the empress asked how he was going to serve his mistress. After all, according to him, such things were unacceptable. The young man met her gaze and offered her a massage, or playing musical instruments as his services. Meanwhile, the servants had already found a red velvet chest with a golden lock, in which treasures were rattling. The empress opened the lid and took out the first thing she could find. It was a gold chain, exactly like the one Yun Yu had. She handed it to Consort Zhang, telling him to put it on. Fear and bewilderment flashed in the boy's blue eyes. He pulled away and refused to fulfill the will of Her Majesty. Bowing his head, he asked for forgiveness, because he refused only because of his origin. His family was a class of scholars, whose charter stated that they should observe the limits of dignity. The girl's thoughts were mixed up. The consort was indeed from a family of scientists to this day, but he was also her subordinate and could be forced. Finally, the lady made her choice. Putting the chain back in its place with the treasures, she replied to Zheng that everyone had the right to live in their own style, and it was not at all necessary to imitate Yun Yu. Before the young man could rejoice, he heard what he had feared. The lady said that since he had stolen his neighbor's chest, he now had to show all the treasures on himself for milady. The empress playfully ran a white fluffy ball over her subject's face, and this caused surprise in his eyes. More was waiting for him next. The lady unbuttoned his clothes and ran a woolly ball along the line of his collarbones. Her majesty amused herself by playing with the body of a twenty-year-old youth, thereby embarrassing him. But not seeing happiness in the eyes of the subject, the widow asked what was wrong with him, and she was surprised that the consort did not expect to see her like this, not enslaved by grief. The empress asked if it was really bad that she led such a depraved life, and he was disappointed. While on top, she tickled the consort's neck with a fur ball. Consort Jiang responded in amazement that Her Majesty was a role model for every girl in their country. After all, the ruler had ruled the country for many years and was raising the future emperor. The girl tilted her head to the side. She smiled and put the pin from the fluffy ball to the young man's throat. Looking into his blue eyes, the empress asked if he blamed his parents for the fact that it was their idea to send their son to the palace to serve her. Raising his head with dignity and meeting her gaze, the consort replied that he had been an orphan for many years and that his uncle had raised him. Surprisingly, the ruler became embarrassed. Her perfectly smooth skin on her cheeks turned pink, as if she had really forgotten about it. The girl had only one thought in her head, that the previous emperor had also lost his parents in childhood and that this was increasingly a rebirth. Speaking about the life of consort Zhang Shijian, his family did not like him at all. To them, he was something like a lump of trash. But as soon as the offer came from the palace, the boy's uncle immediately gave it to him no matter what. He was driven by the hope of reforming his nephew. As a result, the empress came to the conclusion that her tests would hardly work on the young guy. He had already been taught by life. Suddenly the real one pulled her out of her thoughts. He told her that he had chosen this path himself. The girl straightened her shoulders and looked at the slave and leaned closer. She pointed the wooden stick at him again, reminding him that he was only a consort here. Fixing her amber eyes on the boy, the empress ordered him to do whatever she ordered, even if it was disgusting to him. In response, Zhang Xijian merely bowed and muttered that it was an honor for him to be in the mistress's palace. Bowing at Her Majesty's feet, he explained that he had been trained in a completely different way, which might make it difficult for him to immediately do everything he was told. However, he promised to improve. This pleased the empress. She was pleased with such an attitude towards her person. Still kneeling, the young man handed the mistress her toy. In order to fulfill the rest of the whims that milady wishes, the lady threw off the thing and threw off her red robe, which surprised the guy. She lay down on the soft bed and called the consort to her. It was already dark outside. The only sound was the chirping of crickets in the grass. The empress stood in front of Corson Jung, perplexed. This guy, a few minutes ago, claimed that he was a master in massage, and now sat and bashfully hid his eyes. The mistress lifted his chin with her fingers and smirked. She warned the unwitting that the chest could remain with him. However, if it were to disappear, only the subordinate would have problems. The room was filled with the scent of incense, heady and cloyingly sweet. It created a special atmosphere. The consort had already begun to massage the lady's back, kneading it with his soft palms. He caressed her shoulders, on which lay the responsibility for the country and all its inhabitants. The empress was relied upon and praised. One could envy the slim figure of the ruler. 
Zhang Xijian's thoughts were only concerned about who was close to his lady, perhaps Yun Yu or the former Jian. Finally, Her Highness turned around, wrapped herself in a silk sheet and suggested going to bed. The brunette's thoughts immediately began to whirl. He thought that the lady's desire was due to the fact that her subject was not doing enough. The reborn thought about how quickly his lady love hired consorts after her death. He was sad that his wife had forgotten about him so easily. It seemed to him that the blonde did not even regret the death of her husband, not to mention whether the girl could miss him. A fury of anger took hold of him. His precious empress promised that she would not stop until she found him again, and the former emperor decided to take measures to help his beloved find herself. Moonlight filtered through the blinds, faintly illuminating the sleeping consort next to the empress. She was lying on his arm. With his other arm, Yun Jiang gently embraced her majesty. But suddenly something made the blonde wake up and sit on the bed. She thought to herself why she had this dream again. The young woman looked at her sleeping consort. She decided that he would hardly be able to do anything to her, because then he would not be able to leave her bed safe and sound. But she still decided that the young man did not deserve to be treated badly. While in such thoughts, the girl got out of bed. She threw a robe over herself and went to the window. The consort looked at her long hair, which reflected the moonlight. He thought that someday his dissolute empress would pay him in full. Rising above the bed, the brunette decided that first he should find out how many dirty things she did behind his back. Zhang woke up in the morning to a stare. Little Yuanan was staring at him with wide eyes. This look confused the brunette. The child asked him if his mother had enjoyed the night spent with the consort. The boy wanted to know if he could already appoint the young man as a reserve officer. But the servant replied that his majesty was in too much of a hurry, since he still had to work hard to deserve it. The answer angered Yuanan, who thought that the consort had no ambition at all. The boy said that he must understand that the young man did not have much time. If the consort did not achieve anything now, what would he do when his beauty faded? Yuanan said that over the years, the empress had changed many consorts, but only Yun Yu always remained the priority. The little prince said that it would not hurt the consort to ask Yun what his secret was. The brunette repeated Yun Yu's name to himself several times and thought how happy he would be when he found out who was the empress's favorite. The guy didn't like that they were talking about Yun Yu again, and he decided that he would hardly approach him with such a request. Yuanan, seeing Jian's silent face, could not understand why he was so stupid. The young lord decided to give him some books to read on how to gain someone's favor. Zhang asked why his majesty cared so much about him. The boy replied that he was very similar to his father, and he did not want the boy to come to a bad end. The consort asked Yuanan how much he missed the emperor, and he wondered if he wanted his mother to remain faithful to her husband until the end. Yun Jian's words made the future emperor think. He decided that it should not be like this. After all, even among commoners, many widows remarried. Yuanan did not agree with his mother remaining alone for the rest of her life. He believed that his father was a fine man and a role model, and his mother taught him the art of government and how to stabilize an empire. When the boy was ill, the empress took care of him day and night. When the fever subsided, he opened his eyes and saw his mother's worried face. She sat next to him all night long. Yuanan knew that his friend's fathers had many wives, so he saw nothing wrong with his mother supporting several consorts. The young emperor was told that his parents loved each other very much. He believed that his father would not want the dowager empress to be alone. Of course, it was clear that the young woman was no longer alone. Jiang thought that, in fact, she now had too much company. These thoughts upset the consort. He could not explain why he had such a kind son. The boy asked the brunette if that was why he was avoiding his mother. He added that his father would be happy to know that his mother was no longer alone. The consort thought that this did not make him happy at all. But the little boy insisted that the servant should make every effort to gain the empress's favor. Yuanan grabbed the brunette's clothes and said that Yun Yu's attention would not be enough to support the queen. He looked at the servant pleadingly. The young prince said that he would even agree to his mother's alliance with Commander-in-Chief Song if it made her happy, because it was very important to him. But at the same time, Yuanan decided that if Jiang proved useless, he would find more consorts for his mother. The future emperor could not allow Commander-in-Chief Song to take an important place in the empress's life. He decided to end the conversation there. The boy promised to create as many opportunities as possible for the servant so that he could pay even more attention to the mistress. At his mansion, Song learned that Her Majesty had spent the night with two consorts. This news alarmed him. In addition, he heard that Zhang was allowed to attend and participate in political affairs. Song decided that this needed to be stopped as soon as possible. He asked the servant about Shi Jian, who was not getting along with his eldest son Jiang, and decided to take advantage of this by inviting him to the palace. 
The commander-in-chief thought that he needed to make consort Jiang lose her title of favorite, but the servant objected, saying that Madame Jiang loved her son very much and did not agree to this. Sun jerked the servant away and said that it was not his problem, and he did not care how he completed the task. The servant humbly bowed his head. The commander-in-chief remembered that the lady from Shu province had not visited Her Majesty for a long time. He decided that it was necessary to arrange a meeting between her and the Empress. The servant understood everything. The general, smiling contentedly, repeated Zhang Shijian's name again. He thought that he would definitely make sure that Her Majesty would no longer be so kind to the consort. In the judge's office, the consort was grinding ink for the Empress. She watched him silently. The lady thought about not meeting Zhang for a while, but things didn't go according to plan. A few days ago, Yuanan, holding the brunette's hand, asked his mother to let the consort help her grind the ink for drawing. Meanwhile, he ran off to do his own thing. Looking at the servant, the young woman could not help but think that he was the spitting image of her husband. She remembered how her husband never ceased to amaze her while she was drawing. He would gently touch her neck, waist, hips. Then he would kiss her hard, holding her close. Each time it ended with their unity, and the drawing was never finished. The lady felt extraordinary pleasure and peace covered her. The young woman had not experienced this for a long time. She asked the servant if the young prince had sent him to her. The brunette replied that this time he himself asked for permission to see her. The empress was pleasantly surprised by the consort's answer. He said that he was not very strong in state affairs, but perhaps because of his appearance, her majesty was so kind to him. Zhang raised his head and looked at the empress. He said that if Her Majesty needed his services, he was ready to help her free herself from the shackles of longing for the former emperor. The consort's words hurt the empress. She turned away and quietly asked what gave him the right to think so. The servant fell on one knee and asked forgiveness for his mistake. He said he had been thinking about it for days, but perhaps he should not do it again. The empress asked Zhang what exactly made him change his attitude towards her. He replied that at first he thought he should behave coldly and with restraint, away from carnal desires. But during their conversation, the servant realized that the heart is not subject to thoughts, and that he, just like her son, wants to make the empress happy. The lady said her son's name. She thought he was still too young, and she was surprised that it was already important to him not only who was her consort, but also who would deserve her attention. The empress decided to talk about it with her son. Then, turning to a servant, she said that she really missed the former emperor. She felt indebted to him for the power she now possessed, but that was only if he rested forever in the royal tomb. The lady ordered the servant to make some copies for her. She said that her husband had a magnificent handwriting and that he should have one similar to it. Zhang bowed and said that he would carry out Her Majesty's order. He thought to himself that it looked very strange to play the role of his own double. Meanwhile, in the court office, Zhang carefully wrote out the characters he had been instructed to do by the Empress Dowager. He was attentive and focused. When the Empress entered, the servant looked up at her and handed her a tablet covered with writing. The lady looked closely at the young man and noted to herself that he was surprisingly calm. She knew that the previous emperor was ill and weak. Despite his illness, her husband had a striking and slightly harsh handwriting. But now she saw rather graceful, rounded, and neat hieroglyphs. The Empress thought that he was trying to hide his true handwriting. Or perhaps the servant was simply copying the emperor's style. It was hard to tell but perhaps the young man wanted to make his handwriting different from Shi Wuji's. The brunette thought for a moment and didn't notice how the ink fell from the brush onto the manuscript. The servant cried out in surprise, but the mistress admitted that perhaps he was confused when he learned that his cousin would soon arrive at the palace since his uncle had been promoted. Zhang said that now there will be more people in the palace who can support Her Majesty, and added that he would be very happy about this. The lady smilingly said that she was also happy and asked if she and her cousin were alike. Continuing to write, the young man answered that although they were related, they were absolutely different. This upset the empress a little, and she suggested that the consort look at the list to cross out those he personally did not like. The brunette clenched his fist and said that he had no one he disliked. The young woman was surprised, and putting her hand on his shoulder, said that then they would all be admitted to the palace. The lady took the servant's hand in her own and wrote approval of inviting all these people to the palace. Jiang thought to himself that now the queen would have even more men at her disposal. Interrupting the consort's thoughts, the empress said that since childhood, the cousin, using his status, had always humiliated the brunette, and that she had a hard time believing that the young man had no complaints against him at all. Then she informed him that since he was so careless in his words, then he would have to deal with the consequences. And she thought to herself that she wouldn't want her harem to include those who thought too much of themselves. The servant turned to her majesty. 
he asked for forgiveness and realized that he should not have held back when she asked him about it. Gently taking the consort's chin, the empress said that his appearance guaranteed him a special place in her heart. She continued that Changshin Palace is not that big, so people come and go here often. The empress bowed her head to the young man and whispered that only the worthy would be able to stay here. The consort could hardly contain the emotions raging inside him. Zhang couldn't believe that the queen was now cheating on him, and he had to help her with this by looking for someone. The empress sank into the arms of her seated consort and hugged him tightly. He wondered how the girl dared to treat him like that. Suddenly there was a noise behind the door. The voice of a servant was heard calling someone mistress and saying that she could not come in here. The dissatisfied lady, introducing herself as the empress's mother, entered the hall. A voice was heard from behind, saying that this was the mistress of the Shu kingdom, Zhu Bi Yun. The empress, seeing her mother's displeased face, ordered the servant to leave. She did not understand how her relative entered the palace. After her husband's death, the young woman cut off all ties with her and even ordered that she not be allowed into the castle's domain. The empress wondered who had helped the uninvited guest enter the palace. Zhu Bi Yun noticed the consort and thought that the blonde was doing something indecent with him. Looking closely at the servant's face, she was amazed at how similar he was to the late emperor. Zhu Yun sternly declared that he should not be there. The servants escorted the consort out of the hall, leaving them alone. The mother began to scold Shen Tan Chao for her shameless behavior, leaving male concubines in the Changshin Palace. She was outraged that the empress allowed the consort to be in the court office. The blonde listened to her, smiling silently. Playing with the hieroglyph brush, she asked what was so special about it. The mother couldn't contain her emotions and shouted that Shen Tan Chao was keeping a man in the courtyard as a toy who looked exactly like the late emperor. She angrily asked her daughter if she was afraid that her ex-husband might return. But the blonde objected, saying that the family, despite their fear, sent her to live with that man. Shen Tan Chao asked in surprise, could ordinary ghosts really be more frightening than living people? Her mother replied that they were forced to do so, because otherwise the emperor would have destroyed their family. The empress thought that her mother was behaving as usual, not considering it necessary to apologize. And she knew very well that she had been given to the emperor solely for the sake of money. Her majesty turned to her mother and asked whether the previous emperor invited her to the palace because he personally chose her, or whether Zhu Yun approached him herself. Having asked the question, she also answered it. She said that it happened only because her family saw their own benefit in it. The queen assumed that this was the only reason she was here. Zhu Yun thought to herself that the man who brought her here was right. Her daughter was trying her best to protect the young consort. The mother decided to stop this. She reminded them that without their participation, the queen would not have been able to become who she was now. The empress's mother believed that Shen Tan Chao could live a carefree life and enjoy his power only thanks to her family. Zhu Yun commanded her daughter to disperse all the consorts and get rid of Jian first. She said that the empress could not behave so indecently. In response, Shen Tan Chao could not stand it and threw the inkwell at her enraged mother. Zhu Yun, taken aback, said that her family must be cursed if her own daughter tried to kill her. She continued that she raised an ungrateful and heartless child. The empress turned around and left silently. Her mother shouted after her that karma would catch up with her. Shen Tan Chao wondered what she had hoped for. Then she called the guards and reported that this lady had insulted the crown and deserved a slap. The empress watched silently as the servant grabbed Zhu Yun's arms. She began to struggle and scream for release. One of the servants hit the woman on the cheek, after which she began to scream that how dare they treat her like that. Then she screamed at Shen Tan Chao, how dare she hit her. The woman said that she would tell people about the daughter hitting her mother. But the empress calmly replied that her reputation was already far from ideal, and now she didn't care what people would say. The mother thought that her daughter had changed a lot. She had become completely different. There was no trace left of her former obedience. The young girl said that the Shen family's pride now rests on the fact that she is the Empress Dowager. Zhu Yun must now treat her Empress with respect, and she assumed that if her mother told about what had happened, it would become clear that things were not so good between them. And then, everyone would understand that the Shen family had lost its influence. The Empress asked her mother to think carefully about what she was trying to achieve. After all, she understood very well what was being discussed. Zhu Yun thought that the late emperor hated the Shen family, even when he was alive. Now she began to guess what the reason was. Her daughter's behavior was reminiscent of the previous emperor. When word reached them that Tan Chao had become the empress dowager, everyone thought that the Shen family had gained fame and fortune. It was for this purpose that the mother had come to the palace to put in a good word for her family. 
But now that the opportunity had presented itself, all she heard in response was a warning. After sitting all night in the cold courtyard, the mother heard someone calling her. Looking back, she saw a servant who gave her a message from the empress. He said that from now on the mistress would have nothing to do with the Shen family. Because they had once rejected her majesty, now let them act as if they had never had a daughter, so that they wouldn't even dream of gaining any advantage from her. If Lady Shen doesn't understand this, then her majesty will wipe their entire family off the face of the earth. The mother thought that her family was now in danger. Perhaps they would all be killed. Waking up from her thoughts, she felt a hand on her shoulder. Zhu Yun looked up and saw her daughter, who told her that she should stop being delusional about her. She said that her mother could no longer come here and poke her nose into her affairs. Then, calling a servant, the empress reported that Lady Shen had tripped and fallen. She ordered the servants to fix her up and send her home. She also added that her mother should keep her mouth shut, and if she blabbed about today's incident, she wouldn't get off with a simple slap. The empress, after her mother was taken away, was lost in memories. She thought of her father. When Tan Chao was young, her father called her and said that their family wanted to send her to the palace. At the time, this puzzled the girl. She asked her father what he meant, and she did not understand how an unmarried girl could be useful in the palace. Her father replied that she would have to serve his majesty. He assured her that the emperor was ill and needed people to help him. At this point, Tan Chao began to guess what her father was talking about. The blonde said that she was already engaged to Zhou Juhan and she continued that she could not court the emperor because he was a man, and that people would think badly of her. After all, her family has no need to show their loyalty to the ruler in this way. But her father firmly said that the engagement could be broken at any time. He believed that it was just a verbal agreement. The girl was surprised how her father could say that. After all, he always valued modesty and decency. Father continued to say that Shen Tan Chao had a rare chance. He said that the emperor had no concubines in his harem, and he assured that she would be the first. The girl thought how the Shen family couldn't do this to her. She asked why this tyrant made an exception for her, but the father was adamant. He replied that the matter had already been decided, and he assured her that his daughter was smart, and deep down she knew that it would be better for everyone. Father reminded Tan Chao of the consequences of disobeying the imperial order. Their ruler was a cruel man and did not forgive refusal, and our heroine had to agree. At first she thought it was the emperor who had called her to the palace, but when they met, he only glanced at her praising her parents. It turned out that the Shen family had used their daughter to climb the ladder of power. They had ignored all her maiden wishes and ruined her engagement to her beloved Zhou Ju. When Tan Chao entered the palace, she had no title or influence. Besides her, there were about a dozen other maids like her in Han Zhang's palace. All these girls were sent from different families to look after the emperor. Tan Chao was scared and helpless without the support of her loved ones. Back then, her main goal was to survive, and she succeeded but the Shen family still didn't pay any attention to her. They were only interested in money. Finally, the young woman became a dowager empress. Then her family remembered her and began to demand help and even greater privileges. The empress did not understand why her relatives had such an attitude towards her. When she lived with her family, she always followed the rules of the house and never contradicted her parents and treated them with respect. The empress threw a vase off the table. The sound of breaking porcelain was heard. Zhang approached her. Tan Chao thought that before... When she saw the emperor, she walked on the edge of a knife. It made her calculate every move. The girl was in constant fear for her life. These circumstances revealed her family's true attitude towards her. The mask was dropped. Looking intently at the consort, the lady asked if he had heard everything that Madame Shen had said. Zhang confirmed that he had heard everything. The queen said that even commoners do not wash their dirty laundry in the street. Then turning to the consort, she asked who had called him to eavesdrop on the affairs of the royal family. Porcelain shards were scattered across the floor and needed to be cleaned up quickly. The empress stood over the boy, looking down on him. He carefully picked up the sharp particles and folded them into the cloth lying nearby. Suddenly she straddled the young man, gently touching his chest with her hand, with something in the other. The guy looked up at her majesty. A shard of a broken vase was pressed to his throat. The sharp edge was right up against his Adam's apple. The woman smiled and asked if the consort wanted to kill him. The mistress wanted to know if he would give his life for her. The boy nodded. He insisted that his life already belonged to the ruler. Her amber eyes were directed straight into the servant's soul. The young man assured the empress that his words were indeed true. But the man did not want the girl to hurt her hand on the splinter. Indeed, a scarlet drop of blood appeared on the snow-white, delicate skin of the index finger of his right hand. Corson took the porcelain piece and put it with the others. Then he took the thin and graceful hand of the lady in his palms. 
The man carefully brought the mistress's index finger to his lips. The blonde herself carefully watched the consort's actions. Shi Jian's eyes were like those of a loyal dog. The boy wanted to serve his mistress faithfully and not give her any reason to doubt the fulfillment of her duty. The woman again saw the servant's resemblance to Shi Wuji. However, this time it was Jiang, who had no connection to the former emperor. She had been treated in a similar way before. A memory popped into her head, her conversation with Shen Tan Chao. The girl came to the palace at the request of the family. These people were extremely complacent and sent their daughter to bring success to their family. This made the ruler laugh. Neither the girl's parents nor she herself hid their intentions. The emperor assured the maid of good treatment. The newest one had to be obedient and nothing more. Unfortunately, this was only the beginning of long years of torment. All those years the girl heard the beauties crying at night. It made her think about the worst, about who that man really was. The ruler never invited the blonde to bed, but he also did not allow the girls to leave the palace. They were perplexed why they were there. The maids were crying and comforting each other. There was almost no hope left for anything better. Every single girl dreamed of a better future. For any misdemeanor, the ruler lowered the rank of the maids. One of them was assigned to work in the laundry for a small mistake. Young Shen heard this conversation. She herself had seen many beauties who suffered around Tan Shao. If the emperor's attention was ignored even once, the girls would lose his favor. This could ruin her Shen family as well. Therefore, the young miss could not allow herself any mistakes in communication with the ruler. The girl needed his approval. In order to become the best maid, Milady had to study a man's interests and how he thought. She had to pretend to be a graceful and gentle girl. Shen Tan Shao liked them. It was only a little bit left to become a servant without competition. The girl just had to wait for Tan Shao to die. Then she would have the opportunity to leave the palace. But there was one nuance. Several years ago, the young girl did not know that she would become an empress. The lady returned to real time and smiled at the guy. Naturally, she would not want to kill Corson. And he still held the ruler's hand. He wanted to get the opportunity to get rid of the feeling of pity. The woman told that she had once been in the guy's place. And just like him, she had ended up in the emperor's domain against her will. The miss pulled her wrist from the servant's hands. If she had pitied the consort, who would have pitied her? The brunette nodded at this. He had heard a lot about the previous ruler, and he also knew that the current mistress was his favorite in all six palaces. This made the empress happy. The former ruler really loved her. Thanks to Jing and Qin, the girl found support and became who she was now. However, times have changed, so if a guy asked for freedom, the woman would immediately let him go. But if the consort wanted to stay, then in that case he would stay with her until his mistress became bored. The queen stood waiting for the guy's decision, and he was still kneeling before the empress. The woman understood that if it was Shi Wuji himself in front of her, then the consort would choose to leave and cut off all ties with her. Instead of answering, the guy asked what would happen to the person that Her Majesty did not like. The Empress chuckled. She assured him that nothing would have happened to him. He would have only lost a few years wasted in this palace. There was hope in his blue eyes. Perhaps this man could remain an official at the Imperial Palace. Now the young man looked at the lady with hope. Perhaps by becoming part of the palace, this someone could become the lady's love. Having received an affirmative answer from Milady, the boy fell to his knees in a bow. He wanted to remain in the dominions of Her Majesty. This surprised the woman. She asked again if the guy understood the seriousness of this undertaking. The Empress lifted Zhang Shijian's chin. She wanted to see only 100% certainty in the choice in his eyes. Blue eyes sparkled with courage. He was ready to serve until the mistress herself rejected the servant. He also felt sympathy for his mistress because of her widowhood. It must have been hard especially without her loved one. The guy wanted to be there and help as long as possible, but his subconscious was screaming about the opposite. The queen shook her head contentedly. She suggested that Corson become the new emperor in order to make her majesty happy. Meanwhile, the girl deftly removed the cape from the muscular guy's shoulders. She kissed the servant's neck while he stared at the wall with an empty gaze. Zhang agreed to this condition. The empress took his face in her hands. How could he hope for his mistress's good attitude? It was unlikely that the guy would remember her favor in the future. But now she shouldn't worry about it. Sijian had already made his choice. Now he had to accept the consequences of his words. All those years the girl had to be extremely careful. She was overcome by the fear of being exposed. Now she was completely immersed in the sensations of kissing the young Korsun. The boy knew that the Empress's feelings were not real. Everything was given to the deceased ruler. In him, the woman saw an opportunity to have fun. The lady's red robe was filled with the warmth and scent of the room. The kiss became deeper and more sensual. Sooner or later, due to the difference in their statuses, the couple would have to break up and forget about what happened between them. 
All the love and other feelings were the result of submission. If Corson really was the late emperor, he experienced everything that the lady had felt in the past. After a moment's rest, the couple continued kissing while lying on the floor. Hands wandered over their bodies, hair, dark and ash white, tangled into one. The woman will make the guy her servant and make sure that he feels every pain of the miss's past life. The next morning, the mistress was not in a good mood. The guest who came agreed to wait. Having woken up, the girl got up and went to the mirror. Standing with her back to him, she asked if this night was the first for the servant. The young man nodded awkwardly in response. This pleased the empress. Now it was clear why he was so shy and unsure of himself. The queen asked him to improve his skills necessary for a servant, only he had to find a way to learn it on his own. Miss tidied herself up and asked to let manager Chin in. He was probably already waiting at the entrance. As he was leaving, the boy asked the maid if it was true that the empress was extremely favorable to the leader. The girl smiled and nodded. It was true, because the man was not only a commander, but also the head of the secret mission bureau. Sijian smiled. This explained why he was in high regard with Her Majesty, but it was unknown how long he could remain so. The Empress sat opposite the commander-in-chief. Over a cup of strong tea, they discussed the latest events in the country. Shupan was still an unpleasant person hanging around them. All he wanted was to get into bed with the mistress. The woman leaned back in her chair, wondering what her friend thought about it. The commander nodded. Sun noticed the ruler's intention to weaken his authority. If this continued, he would release Shupan. In order to avoid conflict, the queen had to personally meet with the commander-in-chief's right hand. The woman's amber eyes gleamed with mischief. She needed to think about this and fast. When she left, Chin asked about the visit of the lady from Shu province. He said that the lady's words were not serious. He was sure that she only wanted to ruin the queen's life. The man decided to defuse the situation. It was not worth believing the words of the young gentleman. Suddenly he would give the order to sew clothes for the empress's cat similar to her mistress. The woman nodded. Mr. Wei Ron was too young to have a say in his family. The queen gave the order to find out how that woman broke into her castle and why she needed it. The commander did not dare to disobey and was ready to go and carry out the order. He also needed to compare the handwriting of Consort Zheng and the late emperor. The ruler needed this in order to see the similarities between the two men and understand the correctness of her guesses. This couldn't help but surprise Qin. Could it be that the lady still suspected the newcomer of being the resurrected ruler of the state? The woman spoke seriously. He may have looked the same on the outside, but something had changed inside the young man. The leader was ready to serve, and the empress herself smiled, thinking about how easy it would be to expose the consort. The Shen mansion stood out with its red walls against the blue sky and green trees in the garden that surrounded the castle. Mother was ill. The maids could not allow drafts in her chambers. The woman knocked on the door, sobbing. She asked her son Wei to let her mother in, not to treat her so cruelly. Now his sister was the Empress Dowager. Only then came the daughter of the Shen family. The time had come when he had to see the man who had seduced his sister. The maid stood behind and watched the proceedings. Consort Zhang was given a soothing potion. It was to be applied to all the wounds and they would immediately begin to heal. The boy bowed. He was grateful to the lady for this generous gesture. The young man opened a small box with a pink foamy ointment. In his chambers he was scolded like a little boy because the consort did not perform his duties well. The lady once again agreed to go to Commander-in-Chief's son. She had previously rejected his offer because of her favorable relationship with the servant. Zhang responded calmly to this. Song was one of the Empress's subordinates. They needed to get together and discuss the details. This made the man even more angry. They were probably not going to deal with work-related issues. The commander was more muscular and stronger than his consort, and after his first service he already needed medicine. He believed that once the Empress tried the warrior, she would surely forget about the new guy. It would be his complete failure and a waste of opportunity. Now Zijian himself stood up. How could the man know about the ruler's plans and why was he following her? He loomed over his interlocutor. It was unpleasant that he wanted to use the young man for his own purposes, despite the fact that they were equal. Zhang smiled and let the boy go. There was tension between them, and it was unnecessary for the two palace servants. The queen did not like it when her subjects got involved in politics. Most likely, if they did something, the woman would get angry. He needed to frame consort Jiang, and then he would become the mistress's favorite. This was an opportunity to eliminate both problems at once. The boy ran up to the servant. He asked if his grandmother had abused his mother. He threatened that if he did not answer, it would be considered royal treason. The boy was determined to find out the truth. He was ready to question everyone in the castle, but still get the truth. Zhang Shijian said that his mistress had often been sad lately. The boy grabbed him by the arms and began to shake him. 
Jokingly, he furiously shouted that it was time for him to hug her and make her happy. The little boy asked his mother to console him. The young man was confused, and he said that Yun Yu reported that his mother had gone to the castle to see Commander Sun. The boy was confused. He didn't want his friend to give up so quickly. It wasn't a fact that his mother would have chosen the warrior. Maybe they really were just colleagues. Together they thought about how to solve the problem. Corson had indeed made a mistake, but it was still possible to put everything back in its place. Zhang, upset, said that he was an uneducated servant and could not afford anything. His enemy, the head of the army, was a more suitable candidate for the role of emperor. Suddenly an idea occurred to the child. If it was about the courtyard, he could ask Uncle Joe for help. Taking the guy by the shoulders, the boy asked him to report all of Sun's requests to him and only then answer them. The Empress had a crazy idea. She wanted to strip Commander Sun of his powers. It was the only 100% way out of their situation. The woman was ready to neglect her title by becoming a decoy. Anyway, sooner or later the miss will regain her influence and title. Joe forbade his sister to do this, not only because he was worried about her. His nephew was very worried about his mother's fate, so he asked for help. The queen waved it off. They had the opportunity not to start a war and end everything with just one action. She did not understand why they had to shed blood. The man took her hand. He addressed Tan Chao, looking her straight in the eyes, and said that he would do anything to protect her from the inevitable. This surprised the ruler. It had been a long time since she had been treated with such care. It was strange. But Zhou continued. He knew that the lady had been brought to the palace against her will, so he couldn't let her go through that horrible life again. He explained that if the woman was afraid to refuse Sun herself, then she should convey his words. I, Zhou Juhan, am against his and the Empress's joint plans. The queen sighed. She saw no danger in the commander's actions. She did not want to expose her citizens. The man came close to the girl. Their foreheads touched. The guy was not ready to call off their engagement again after losing her a few years ago. For many years he was there as an advisor and a good friend. But the young man always wanted to share a bed and deep feelings with the lady. The woman lowered her gaze. He was the head of Ching Lu, and she was the emperor's widow. This had to continue without violating the boundaries. If he crossed that invisible line between them, he would be in great danger. Envious people would watch his every move, ready to attack him at a moment of weakness. The empress pulled her fingers out of his hand. The man loved her past and wanted to protect her from that past. But everything had changed, and the young people could no longer come together without serious losses. The girl lost her former greatness and respect. Even her mother shamed her daughter for the lack of shame in many of the ruler's actions. Even this did not convince Joe to change his mind about their engagement. The man was adamant on this matter. He knew about the number of Mrs. Consorts. As he knew, she was not going to stop expanding her harem. But the young man still wanted to become her support and protection. The advisor knelt down and kissed his mistress's hand. He was ready to await his hour in the decision of my lady. The queen took two steps back, a little further from Joe. She asked him to let go of the past as she had done. And she asked him not to escalate the situation and to let what was supposed to happen happen. The man realized that he was the one to take the first step towards their relationship. With one deft movement, the cape flew to the floor, leaving the guy with a bare torso. The lady's bright yellow eyes widened in surprise. The woman had not expected such a turn of events and could not find the words. She covered her face with her palm. The girl did not want to return to the feelings that burdened her. The miss could also get pleasure from consorts. Her conscience did not allow her to ruin her friend's life. Someday, after some time, he could harbor a grudge against his beloved's behavior. The lady was no longer a girl who blushed at the mere sight of men. Now others blushed at the mere presence of the mistress. Joe pressed the girl's hand to his heart. He promised to do whatever Tan Chao wanted with him. The lady pushed her companion onto his back. She sat on top and ran her fingernail along the white skin of her friend's chest. She hoped that this would frighten the man, and he would retreat. The empress said that in bed he was not an advisor, but her servant like all the other consorts. He had to be obedient, otherwise it would not please her. Ju blushed. He had never been under a woman before, and had never heard such a thing addressed to him. But the young man agreed. Tan Chao stood up and walked to the other end of the room. Because of her, the advisor could lose his honorable name and the respect of the people. The empress respected him and the parents of the Zhou clan. A young man in love should not tarnish their purity and devotion to duty. Ju stood up and covered his chest with a cloth. He realized that Her Majesty's refusal was final. Miss smiled. The couple needed to leave their business relationship and not get involved in the conflict between the government and the people who love their rulers. The lady would retain the title of widow. In time, her son Yuanan would become emperor and his mother would retreat into the shadows, doing her own thing.
Because of her love for her friend, the girl did not want to ruin the young man's authority and neglect his life. The girl turned away, looking out the window at the setting sun. She asked Zhou to get dressed and leave Changshin's palace. As he left, the young man said that he would be ready to hear from his beloved if Her Majesty's opinion changed. Standing on the bridge, Zhu Han was lost in memories. The former emperor needed an advisor, with a pure mind and good intentions. Then he was ready to make any sacrifice for his wife. The man was the protector of the valiant imperial family. Now it was hard for the guy to understand how much the situation had changed over all this time, and what Tan Chao herself had become. But the lady promised not to make Sun her consort. She would not have done so, even if she had not had 3,000 men in her harem. The Empress was walking in the Cherry Blossom Garden with her bodyguard. She wondered if the late Emperor might have known about her engagement to Joe. Perhaps that was why he made the guy an advisor, and thereby put him in mortal danger. The responsibility for every step hung on the man until now. The guard bowed. He had no right to discuss the actions and orders of the late ruler. After a few minutes of silence, the woman turned to face her guards. She wondered how the people in the palace had learned of the lady's plans, which she was only thinking about. The maids admitted that they had blabbed everything to Kui Ying. She trusted the courtier fan, so she told him everything she knew. After all, even Consort Zhang had spoken to the emperor about this. This was the human nature that no one could escape. The queen asked to explain to the young girl what things were worth saying and what were to be kept secret. Just as the ruler was about to leave, her bodyguard called out to her. He reported his data on the consort's manuscripts. The courtier did not have time to get them. Jiang's cousin destroyed all the sheets shortly before the guards arrived. This made Miss think. Apparently this was how he was able to keep the lady from meeting Commander Sun. It worked. Meanwhile, Sijian did not miss the opportunity to find out about his enemy. He was hiding a lot, since there were clothes for disguise in his box. Suddenly the Empress entered the room. She was angry that the guy had sent Advisor Zhou to her and prevented her from meeting with the Commander-in-Chief. The girl folded her arms over her shoulders and said with a sly smile that that act could not have been an accident. The consort confirmed her guess by admitting that he had indeed done it deliberately. He added that Commander-in-Chief Song was a powerful man. He noticed that such a person would hardly please Her Majesty. The brunette began to talk about the late emperor. The lady interrupted him, sat him down on the bed and hanging over him, ordered him to continue. The guy continued that, if the late emperor had a living spirit in heaven, he would definitely not want to see Her Majesty go against the desires of her heart. The blonde asked if the fact that they looked alike gave him the right to speak on his behalf. Remembering the Empress's words that since the late Emperor was no longer here, she invited him to take his place to make her happy. He replied that he was merely carrying out the will of Her Majesty. The girl asked if the consort thought that she was going against the wishes of his heart. The guy believed that Her Majesty would have liked a more gentle man. The Empress asked the boy why he was so sure that when she was alone with Commander-in-Chief Sun, his hot nature would not soften. The Empress also asked the boy what if she had been used to eating only vegetables for years, but now she wanted to try meat. He replied that if Her Majesty wanted to try meat, then he could change too. And then he turned the girl around and hovered over her. The guy said that no matter how Her Majesty wanted to see him, he could change to suit her wishes. The consort asked for only one thing. If the commander-in-chief ever rose to high rank, he wanted to remain at Her Majesty's side as a quiet haven. The brunette said that if he ever tired her with his presence, then Her Majesty could simply send him away from the palace. The girl was convinced that she was right when she asked the guy about it. After receiving a satisfactory answer, she told him that there was no need for it. She herself despised people who maliciously tried to manipulate her, as if they thought she was a bird in a golden cage. In her opinion, Commander-in-Chief Song would definitely not achieve a higher position unless he was willing to completely obey her. The blonde asked him if he was worried anymore. He said he had acted rashly because he was overly suspicious. If Her Majesty felt that he had crossed the line, he would ask for punishment. The Empress informed him that he would definitely be punished. Otherwise, if other concubines in the harem follow this example, it could lead to chaos. Incitement and attempt to obstruct the conduct of public affairs were serious crimes. The girl said this with a rope in her hands. However, he was not threatened with the death penalty. However, he would not be able to escape punishment. He thought that this was just a prelude, a trifle. From the palace, John's voice was heard, addressing Her Majesty. He said that if the queen wanted to punish him, then the servants could do it. But the mistress said that she could not trust the servants with such a matter. She continued to wrap the consort's body with rope, tying tight knots. When she was finished with the body, the young woman tied a rope around the servant's mouth, it was like the bit that you put on a horse to control it. The Empress said that when she learned the news, she thought that her favor was the reason for the servant's behavior. 
The consort silently looked straight at the queen. She continued that she had no doubt that the soul of the late emperor had entered this body by force. A frightened look flashed in the consort's eyes. Stroking the rope on the brunette's body, the mistress said that in this world, there were reasons for everything that happened. But she would not do anything bad to the young man. Zhang's heart was pounding wildly, and the lady only tightened the rope on his chest. She said that she had not intended to visit the commander-in-chief's mansion, but now she had changed her mind. She added that the consort's plan had failed and threw a robe over him. The empress said that he had failed to guess her intentions. Then she added that people who knew her well would understand everything. The lady stood up and headed for the exit. At the door, she turned around and said that she would untie him when she returned. The blonde decided that the young man should know what it was like to live when days seemed like months. When she left, she ordered the servants not to disturb the consort and not to come in. Then the queen called a servant and told him to inform Commander-in-Chief's son that she would be with him this evening. A sad Jung was left sitting alone with his mouth covered, lost in thought. A bird in a cage will always remain a bird in a cage, he thought, even if it is a golden cage. He remembered playing with his favorite bird, calling it Phoenix. Meanwhile, at the Shen estate, the young master was informed that Her Majesty had left her residence. Hearing about this, he ordered to go to the palace immediately. The angry queen entered the commander-in-chief's palace. She asked if Sun Zhang considered her the empress dowager. Sun hastened to reassure the queen that it was harmful to her health. He offered her a couple of glasses. The commander-in-chief suggested calmly sorting everything out step by step. The lady thought that his intentions were so obvious. Then she decided to play along. She quietly poured the contents of the glass into the flower and pretended to have poured everything out. A satisfied song licked his lips and looked at the empress. Suddenly a whistle was heard, and the commander-in-chief saw the tip of a sword in front of him. He was taken aback by the surprise. The mistress said that Commander Song knew about the bad relations with the Shen family. But despite this, he secretly brought Madame Shen into the palace. She slashed the sword across his neck and cut Song's clothes. Coming close to him, the empress asked what he was planning. The commander-in-chief stumbled back and fell onto the bench. Holding the sword, the lady said that she had sent General Xupan to Suzhou to quell the rebellion, but Sun once again countermanded her order. The Empress demanded an explanation. The commander-in-chief said that Xupan was very important to him. The blonde looked at him with displeasure. Then she asked if this general was really so important that it was possible not to carry out the order of the ruler herself. Song took the lady's hand and said that she was charming, even when she was angry, despite her threatening appearance. The commander-in-chief said that as long as he was nearby, the beauty could count not only on the general, but also on his life. He took the empress by the chin and said that he could give her anything. The lady insisted that she had no use for his life. Then the empress leaned over, placed the sword between Sun's legs, and asked if she castrated him. Would he then say, yes? The frightened military leader claimed that Her Majesty did not want to do this at all. The empress accused Sun of being interested only in her body. The lady assured that if this was not so, she was ready to communicate with him day and night. The commander replied that the queen already had a chief, Chin, who was engaged in domestic politics. He did not want to stand in his way, and he insisted that all he wanted was to watch the empress from afar and lead the army for her. Holding the sword to Song's throat, the queen assured him that if he dared to threaten her again like he had this morning. The military leader replied that he had realized all his mistakes and apologized. The lady stepped back and said that she was a little drunk. Then she asked Sun if he had anything against her impulsive behavior. The commander began to convince the queen that he did not object. He was only worried that she would not damage her precious hands with the sword. The queen said that was enough and turned to leave. The dumbfounded Sun shouted after her that he regretted this evening and regretted that this was all for today. The queen stopped and turned around, throwing the sword, which stuck into the table a centimeter from Sun. He fearfully insisted that everything was fine, and the main thing was that Her Majesty was not nervous. The commander silently watched the Empress leave. He thought that when you anger beautiful women, you can experience completely different feelings. The servants were whispering quietly behind Song's back. They were saying that the commander had been completely taken under the Empress's control. Now it was unclear whether he would be able to get her. One of his subordinates asked the general whether he really intended to send Chupan to suppress the rebellion. The commander replied that it would have to be done anyway. He hoped to gain recognition at the imperial palace later. Song thought it would be boring if Shen Tan Chao didn't have thorns. Today she was ready to kill him. The servants decided that beautiful women were very dangerous. And Song went on dreaming about the queen, thinking about what had happened. Meanwhile in the palace, young master Shen entered the queen's hall. 
A servant shouted after him that the empress had ordered that no one should enter there because the servant Jiang was resting there. But he entered the room without paying attention to the servants. Shen decided that he would explain everything to his sister later. He walked resolutely towards the bed and mentally wondered how Jiang could sleep at this time. The guy frowned. Heading towards the empress's bed, he tore the blanket off the corson. The young man lay tied with a thick red rope. His mouth was also tied like a gag. Shen firmly grabbed the servant's chin and lifted his face towards himself. His pulse quickened from the complete power he had over another person. The young man really wanted to hit the consort's handsome face with all his might. He believed that although he was outwardly attractive, his whole soul was dirty and spoiled. The man felt disgusted to look at the tied-up lecher, and he ordered to throw him into a wooden barn. The maid approached the gentleman anxiously. She assured him that the half-naked youth could have caught a cold in the damp room. Moreover, Her Majesty asked not to disturb him over trifles. The man was not surprised that it was his sister's idea. Previously, the Empress did not like to punish the guilty in this way. Now the woman's patience reached its peak. She had to ask her closest servant for help in an important matter, but the maid blushed. She could not tell the master that this was not a punishment from his sister. It was done for the pleasure of the queen. The girl went out into the yard, where the gates to the garden were already being closed. The servants quickly fulfilled the man's wish by placing the consort in the barn near the haystack. The lady was walking towards them. The hems of her dress were fluttering in the wind, and her hair was falling in long ribbons down her neckline. The brother bowed. He said that he had been to her domain to resolve the problem with concubine Jiang. Wei continued. He wanted to help his sister eliminate anyone who was causing her any trouble. The man sat by the window and heard everything. He did not understand how his instincts about Shen Wei Ran had let him down. After all, he treated him with undisguised hostility. The lady raised her hand, stopping her brother's speech. The matter she was dealing with was of concern only to the gentlemen of higher rank. The young man understood that they did not want to see him in the palace, but he tried to reason with his relative. He promised many problems if she did not leave the consort aside. In the past, Milady had spoken of her dislike for the emperor. However, now she was very interested in Jiang Xijian, who, although not related to the former ruler, was remarkably similar to him. The brother said that for several years after the death of the king, the woman looked very free and relaxed. The man was killed from the inside by the awareness of his relative's pain. He would not want the girl to plunge into deep emotions again. The lady took him by the shoulders and looked him straight in the eyes. She assured him that Wei Ran should not have tormented himself with such thoughts about her. He wiped away his tears. The blonde stepped back, giving her brother room to breathe. He wanted to help her, not take away her right to choose. As he left, the man said that he had sent his mother for treatment because of her feeble-mindedness. The brother himself left the palace without forcing the empress to tolerate him any longer. The girl looked up at the sky. Van was right. She shouldn't look to the past, but live life to the fullest. It was time to embrace the present. The lady gave the order to untie Consort Jiang and take him to the Kuei Hall. Perhaps all the Empress's doubts were false. The brunette leaned his head against the ice wall. He admitted that Her Majesty did not love him. Despite the kind words about the Shen family, all its members were spoiled from the beginning of their lineage. For the sake of wealth and power, they all lost their shame and conscience. Their eldest daughter was a depraved woman and did not hesitate to declare it. Shan Tan Chao was even amused by her younger brother's devotion and admiration for his sister. Meanwhile, the brother himself stood on the cliff. The wind blew on him from all sides. His thoughts were only about how he was not doing enough. He remembered how he asked his sister to leave the palace when the emperor died. He would have liked to protect his loved one from all the future troubles that really did happen to her. But the girl was concerned about the family's status, which could only be worsened by her escape. Rules and laws were above all else for her. His decisions were bold and daring. There would have been a severe punishment against the royal throne for such. However, the empress only let the man go giving him a chance not to make mistakes in the future. There were rumors in the city about the return of the lady from the Song Palace. It was said that it was a tense meeting. Yun Yu tossed and turned. The shouts of the townspeople prevented him from sleeping peacefully. The boy covered his ears with a pillow, trying to muffle the sounds. He couldn't help but glance at Jung. He wished he could be the same kind of toy for the Empress, to be tied up and played with. It was strange that Xi Jian himself was ashamed of this. The boy moved to his neighbor's bed. The young man liked the red marks on the consort's snow-white skin. He was even surprised why the queen didn't keep him. In his dreams, the lady gently untied the knots on the man's body and caressed the wounds from the rough rope with her fingers. Behind the doors, the cries of the meeting between the mistress and commander's son continued. 
They said that the two of them were very passionate and did not hide their ardent feelings. Jung leaned forward and told Yu about an important task. Yu stepped back and looked at the man with an offended expression. He wondered why he had to listen to his rival. But in order to keep the lady in the palace and not give Sun a chance, they had to work together. Two days later, the maid came to the empress's chambers. The girl reported that things were not going well for concubine Jiang. She explained that the consort had had a fever for two days already, and medicines were not helping. Most likely, the guy froze to death while he was in the old barn. Moreover, the man refused to untie the ropes until the next day, so that his mistress would be happy. During his delirium, he always called his queen and asked her to spare him. This has happened from the moment the ropes were removed until today. When the girls entered the chambers, Zhang was asleep. He had just taken his medicine and had fallen into a restless sleep in which he sweated so much that the sheets had to be changed every time. The empress sat on the edge of the bed. In his sleep, the consort muttered about his mistress and asked her not to hate him. Suddenly, with an icy hand, he felt and grabbed the blonde's wrist. He pulled her towards him without opening his eyes. The boy begged her majesty not to leave and groaned from the pain all over his body from wounds and fever. The lady squeezed the boy's palm with her fingers. A few years ago, something similar happened to Shen Tanchao himself. Then the maids gave medicine to the emperor and left compresses on his wife. As soon as the girl reached out to put down the cloth soaked in chamomile infusion, the gentleman grabbed her by the wrist. He hovered over her and began kissing her neck. This made her scared because she thought the emperor was sleeping. But the man was already kissing his subject's body and pulling off her top cloak. The mist tried to wriggle out of his strong hands. The emperor stopped. He asked if the girl didn't want this. She shook her head in fear. The beloved wanted this with her master, but she was afraid. And she was afraid because she had never done this with anyone. The young ruler stroked the blonde's chin with his finger. He understood that the girl had come to help him and not to satisfy her desire. Just as abruptly as he had started, the man stood up. He asked the blonde to leave. He assured her that she was no longer needed. When the girl had already stepped over the threshold with one foot, the emperor said after her that she was especially charming today. The girl turned sharply and left. Up until that moment, she had been planning her escape in all sorts of ways. But now everything was changing rapidly. To become the emperor's favorite wife, she had to satisfy the master in everything and always. From now on, there was no way for her to leave the palace. Standing at the well, the girl thought that she had angered the king with her words. Perhaps she had offended him with her fear. Then she decided that the only way out was to catch a cold. This disease would prove the lady's weakness. She quickly poured a bucket of ice water over herself. Sitting on the throne, the emperor asked where Miss Shen was. The servant told him that she had caught a cold and could not be near the ruler, so as not to infect the ruler. The man came to visit his favorite. She was sleeping, her arms folded on her chest. Talking in her sleep, she muttered enthusiastic words about her master. Miss opened her eyes and saw the emperor. The blonde thought that she had dreamed of him and closed her eyes, continuing to fight the high temperature. The girl did not want to become vain, being the ruler's favorite. Therefore, she wanted to leave everything as before. That day, she did not receive a response from the man. But after her recovery, she learned of an order that stated that she was becoming the emperor's wife. Returning to reality, she sat on top of her consort. He woke up abruptly and raised himself up on his elbows. Zhang grabbed the empress by the sleeve. He asked why she was so cold to Sijun and what he could do to fix it. The boy sadly lowered his head. He asked if the empress was angry with him because of his facial features. The brunette said that the queen's brother had spoken of the consort's ugliness. He admitted that he was so disgusted by the miss because of this, and he asked why she disliked the emperor so much. The woman stood up. She asked not to burden the patient's head and not to think about such things. And she left, leaving behind a trail of refined perfume. But the boy got out of bed. He asked Mrs. Forgiveness for his questions. He only wanted to be loved by his mistress. Grabbing the mistress by the hand, he pulled her towards himself, and they fell to the floor together in an embrace. Later they sat opposite each other. The consort apologized for his actions. He admitted that he had probably offended his queen. But the blonde only decided to tell the young man the whole truth about the former emperor. At first, the girl was really afraid of him and avoided him. But over time, they came to a mutual comfort. As for her brother, he was always passionate and spoke without thinking. The servant should not take Wei's statements seriously. As they parted, the empress stroked her consort's hair and asked him to rest. At night, thinking became freer. Standing in the garden, Miss was immersed in memories of her past life. Then the emperor himself satisfied her. In a beautiful robe, the obedient lady sat and rejoiced at her new title. But there was a price to pay for everything. She had to satisfy her master. 
in a way that would not upset him. That night he showed how much his inner world contradicted his cute appearance. He looked like a hunter. His wife was blushing beneath him. She was interested in how the master had learned of his former servant's feelings for him, and why he was sure of it. Instead of answering, the man again covered her fragile body with his strong muscles and squeezed both of the beauty's wrists with his large palm. He asked the young lady in a commanding voice to remember that only he, her master, could cause her such pain. The couple sat under a blanket. The new wife asked why the emperor had chosen her. Smiling, the man kissed the girl's hair. All the contenders wanted this for their families or money. His empress had pure intentions and sincere feelings. He hugged the girl from behind and promised to love her and never hurt her. Laughing, the missus believed him. The lady took her husband's hand and brought it to her heart. She promised to be faithful to her master. Everyone thought about how lucky and how easy it was for the girl to become a ruler. But only she was destined to know about the pain that the ruler caused her. The man treated her in a special way only in bed. Otherwise, he seemed to have no feelings for his wife. The same with their son. He was more irritated by the baby than touched by him. The man was unfeeling. It was a pity that the empress realized this too late. Every time crystal clear, salty tears flowed from her eyes, the girl repeated her mantra to herself. She needed to hold out until the ruler died and then breathe a sigh of relief. Every time she was around Jiang Shijian, the lady would remember those feelings. Whether it was a kind of love, the miss did not understand. The queen summoned the consort's physician. She wanted to inquire about some details of the servant's illness. The young man stood at the open window looking out onto the street. The woman did not deny her dislike for the emperor. This made him smile painfully. Song stood in the middle of his chambers, thinking about the time he had spent with the beautiful empress. A voice rang out that made the commander-in-chief throw away his polished sword. A stranger in a black mask was walking along the roof. He was amused by the whole situation that was developing around them. The situation in the army was not cheerful, but the commander continued to have fun. The stranger asked how things could go well for the commander if the empress continued to deceive him. Sun only chuckled at these words. Most likely someone in a mask was jealous of the queen towards him. After all, she had no reason to fire her loyal warrior elder. The man continued. He asked why he had stopped at the rank of commander. After all, he could have achieved great heights, but he remained under the skirt of the empress. The guy just waved his hand at this. He saw nothing wrong with a quiet and dignified death at the palace. The dowager empress wanted love and affection, and she was looking for that very thing at her side. This had nothing to do with her huge harem of handsome men. This made the secret guest laugh. He did not believe that the empress had abstained from sex for three years after her husband's death. Perhaps such modest behavior was only with song. The commander frowned. He did not understand where this strange dialogue with the advisor on the roof would lead him. He threw up his hands. He said that he could not believe in the sincerity of his interlocutor's words, because he was standing two floors away and hiding his identity. Someone continued. He told that the only thing that suppressed the warrior was the Bureau of Confidential Missions. The rest was in the hands of the man. This already interested the commander-in-chief even more. He asked if the man knew a way to kill Chin and remove the obstacles in his path. Black Mask said that he knew where all the Emperor's secret documents were, avoiding the topic of murder. Having suggested meeting a month later to work together, the unknown person disappeared, as if dissolving into the darkness. The image of the first bureau chief, Tianyi, popped into Sun's head. He was remembered in dark clothes and a black mask. The guy assumed that he wanted to overthrow Chin, but it was unclear why. The morning greeted the recovered Zhang with the cheerful singing of birds and the bright rays of the gentle sun. Yun Yu was standing behind him making strange sounds. The guy walked towards him and asked what was going on. The young man said that he had somehow offended the empress, and she had not visited Yu in recent days. Therefore, he practiced his breathing. This made Shi Jian laugh. He did not see in his partner the charm with which he intended to impress the queen. This angered the guy. He argued that in the entire palace there was no one more beautiful than himself. To this, the brunette only sighed and cleared the way to the castle. The consort knew how Yun had set him up. So now he was the one who had to go and ask if the mistress was in a favorable mood today. In the Shangxin Palace, the widow was looking through the archival documents laid out on her desk. The girl was still tormented by doubts about Zhang's cold. The doctor confirmed the diagnosis of hypothermia in the cold air. But this was not the whole truth. A maid entered the chambers. She announced that Yun Yu had arrived at the palace with a whole spool of thick rope. A few minutes later, the consort was already standing before the empress with a vine and a rope in his teeth. He asked for punishment for his actions. This surprised Miss. The woman asked what the servant had done that he asked for such a punishment. Feigned tears began to accumulate in the corners of his eyes. 
the handsome man asked to scold him for not being handsome enough in front of the beautiful queen. The empress took the vine in her hands. The subordinate winked happily at the girl, playfully asked to punish him for this. He would gladly accept the real pain he received from the mistress's hand. She smiled slyly and extended her hand to him. But the lady felt sorry to spoil Yuya's snow-white and tender skin. Therefore, she suggested trying a slightly different punishment on him. A few minutes later, he was writing papers, which Her Majesty placed in a stack in front of him. The ruler herself read them and checked them. Unexpectedly, the consort wrapped his arm around the lady's leg and lay down on her lap. The girl threatened the young man that he would rewrite the documents day after day until he finished it. This news only made the naive servant happy. It seemed to him that in this way, Miss wanted to spend more time with him. Ten days later, Jiang stood by a tree carving fives into the bark. Yun Yu appeared behind him. He happily reported that over the past few days, Her Highness had used the servant to the maximum. It was just a shame that Zijian refused to go to her. But as soon as the man turned around to ask what they had both been doing for the past ten days, the consort yawned and went to prepare a healing soup for his mistress. The guy then threw out a statement about the hopelessness of his rival. He froze. The young man did not agree. The lady herself asked him to come every day. He also took the opportunity to brag about the compliments given to his face and skin while serving his sentence. Suddenly pain shot through the servant's right cheek. He grabbed his face with his palm, looking at Zhang with fear. In the hall, an excited Yu told how the Empress planned to hold a second funeral for her late husband, who had appeared to her in a dream a month ago. He also told how he copied strange papers about mysticism for the ruler. The main word everywhere was exorcism. The boy's thoughts began to think that all the work was done to drive out a wandering spirit like him. The boy assumed that the Empress Dowager was planning to imitate the Emperor of the Han Dynasty. Emperor Wu summoned necromancers to bring back Miss Li because he yearned for her. Her Majesty may have had the same intentions. The boy wondered why the Empress Dowager would need information about exorcism. Perhaps it was all related to Zhang Shijian. Hyun Yu recalled how concubine Zhang had previously not resisted when he was bullied, but now everything had changed. He revealed his true nature, or covering his mouth with his hand, the guy suggested that his corpse was used as a vessel to bring back someone's soul. The boy thought about the possibility that the emperor might have returned while in Jiang Zijian's body. Remembering the consort's strange behavior, he became increasingly aware of this, and he felt a chill. The empress dowager had many men with her whom she favored, but only Jiang Zijian was favored. Perhaps her majesty was already aware of this, and that was the reason she treated him like this. He followed his orders unconsciously precisely because he was a former emperor. The boy knew that the former emperor was a cruel and ferocious man. He did not allow anyone to look at the empress or even think about her. For ten years he dictated the government, and no one dared to go against him. If there was a person who dared to challenge the emperor, he did not live to see the next day. All the crimes fell on his head like stones, making him think that he deserved to die for his actions. Suddenly noticing Jian behind him, the brunette guy asked Yun Yu with a frightening, unnatural friendliness what he thought about this. Shaden replied that he had suddenly realized something. He realized that the former emperor was the most important person in Her Majesty's heart. Yun Yu told Jian that because he resembled the former emperor, he would always be held in high esteem. Compared to him, he was like a praying mantis trying to stop a chariot. There were a few candles lit, while it shone as brightly as the sun and the moon. The guy admitted that he had bitten off more than he could chew. He decided that he would not say a word, and would be ready to listen to any requests or questions. Jian asked if the brown-haired man had really touched the Empress Dowager's fingertips, and then her body. According to him, he only touched her lightly, and Her Majesty did not even feel it. Desperately waving, he tried to justify himself, explaining his actions. The guy said that he had undressed in front of Her Majesty countless times, but the mistress had categorically refused him. He suddenly realized that he had said too much. John ordered Yun Yang to pretend to be sick and brew a bowl of tonic soup. He then planned to take it to a side hall of Changshin Palace. Shoten thought it was complete nonsense. He was constantly thinking about all sorts of outrageous things, as he had been absent-minded lately. He absolutely had to get a good night's sleep. He was sure that when he woke up, everything would be fine again. The next day, in a side hall of Changshin Palace, Shen Tan Chao was painting. Consort Jian came to tell her some news. John reported that concubine Fang had scratched his face with a bamboo leaf, making him ashamed to go to her. He brewed a tonic and asked her to take it to the empress. The first thing she asked the servant was whether he had recovered. The boy replied that the imperial physician was very skilled, and that was why he was almost completely cured. The empress invited Jian to come and look at the portraits she had painted. 
She then asked the consort whether the former emperor would have returned to life out of anger if she had burned them. This concubine did not know whether the former emperor would come back to life out of anger, but he knew that Her Majesty had never drawn him. Seeing Jian's sad face, the girl realized that she had never actually drawn him before. He also recalled that Her Majesty had not appeared in Keiwe Hall for more than twenty days. It seemed to the brunette that the reason was that Her Majesty no longer wanted to see this concubine. Touching the boy's face, she replied that she couldn't help but want to see such a charming face. The Empress didn't draw it for certain reasons, not to mention that she rarely draws it anyway, especially the details. Instead of drawing on paper, she felt more comfortable drawing in public. She asked the concubine if he liked the proposal. Not daring to object, Jian obeyed the suggestion and lay down on the bed on his stomach. Throwing the cloak off his back, the Empress began to draw. Shen Tanchao said that she had a dream about the former Emperor. He told her that his soul was tied to the palace and he could not leave. So the blonde decided to ask the necromancers to perform a ritual for him. Meanwhile, she carefully drew a beautiful picture on the servant's back. She noted that he looked very much like the former emperor. During the ritual, he had to hold a portrait of the emperor in his hands and let it take over his body. The boy wondered what would come of it. After he took over the body, would the former emperor be able to use this concubine and escort her majesty? Zhang wondered why wait until today if they could bring back his soul after death. The girl said that if the necromancers could do this, then everything would be as it always was. The guy grinned after her words and thought. The boy knew that the empress had come up with a plan to evict him from this body. He also understood that she had long since begun to suspect him after all the situations that had happened. Shen Tan Chao wanted to bring back the real Zhang Shijian. She was sincerely kind, the empress who had deceived him all his life. When she decided to be so cruel, she became like him, Emperor Shi Wuji. He was willing to go through hell if it would help her majesty. However, this concubine did not understand one thing. If the former emperor had loved her majesty very much before his death, it must have been because of his love and longing for her. If he was still trapped in this earthly realm, that would confirm the same thought. So he asked if her majesty would be able to bear being driven out. It was assumed that if he knew that a harem had been assembled after his death, he would definitely kill her. This would be done for the reason of being together in the afterlife, since the emperor was the announcer. His lonely soul was still wandering here. It would have been better if he had been sent to where he belonged. Besides, she had Jiang to accompany her, and that was enough. After this statement, she asked if he agreed with her. Sitting on top of the guy and moving closer to his face, the empress clarified that this part was intended only for the concubine. Shen Tan Chao truly liked the former emperor's body. She brushed the paint on the boy's neck and said, Unfortunately, he couldn't show her his weaknesses, and she also didn't like being dominated. John was young, energetic, and strong. The reactions to the deft brush movements on his body were much more interesting. Each brush movement made his body tremble, and his face blushed noticeably. After some time, the blonde finished her work. There was a large, beautiful drawing on the consort's body. She asked the guy what he thought of it. He sincerely replied to her that Her Majesty was indeed a master of painting. John regretted that he could not see the entire painting. The Empress assured him that when he returned, he could look in the mirror. And she also allowed him, after he had looked enough, to wash everything off and take a bath with incense. Moving a little closer, she said that in ten days, she would come personally to check on him. In the harem, the east wind prevailed over the west, or the west prevailed over the east. The Empress said that giving her his body was very beneficial, and she hoped that he would be able to see for himself. Shi Wuji believed that the Empress did all this on purpose. Hearing a familiar voice, he turned around and saw Yuan. The Lord heard that John had visited the Empress Dowager. He was glad that he had finally taken the initiative. He suddenly noticed the drawing on his body, and mockingly noted that the brunette seemed to be already an adult, but there was still ink on his body. The drawing reminded him of some flower petals. Pulling on the cloak, the child asked Jian to bend down so he could take a look, but the consort refused. Yuan insistently asked to show the drawing, but he was not going to stop, which irritated the brunette even more. Looking at the servants, the guy ordered them with his eyes to help him look at the drawing, but they didn't even intend to move. For some time, he still asked the consort not to run away and to show the drawing, but all requests and orders were ignored. When the child finally got tired, Jian had the opportunity to escape. Jian had to go and wash his face, and then they had to talk. Yuan eventually gave in, because he was not the type of person to force someone to do something against their will. The brunette asked why his majesty had come to him today. With a serious face, Yuan said that in ten days he needed the brunette to do something. The little gentleman hopefully asked that if the necromancers could not summon his father's soul, 
someone would read this so that he would return.